Hello, I'm Pastor Chuck Seilstad, Senior Pastor of Center Points Christian Fellowship. We're continuing our study on Gog and Magog and the coalitions that attack Israel in the prophetic events prior to the tribulation. Now today we're going to examine uh, the coalition members who will attack Israel and attempt to destroy the nation and take their riches. Now, next we're going to, what we're going to look at is Russia and other nations form an alliance. Now, while there is a, a slight debate among Bible scholars, the list of nations in our lesson who are involved in the Gog and Magog War represents the best consensus of the identity of the nations in Ezekiel 38. Now, the main players of which there is no doubt are Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, which was part of the larger ancient Ethiopia, as well as Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, Somalia, and possibly others. And now, I believe this, that we are living in the times, the end times, and there would have to be a growing union between the biggest players in this group, and there has been now. For many years, they did not like each other, but now they're buddies, they're friends, they, they help each other. And we need also to note that the vast majority of the nations in Ezekiel's list have one huge glaring thing in common with each other. They hate Israel and their, their Muslim nations. They're militant extremists uh, with Islam, and they have two goals in this day and age. The first one is the spreading of their religion ever, into every country in the world so that Islam and its Sharia law will become the way by which the world is to be governed. The second is the complete and total destruction of the Jewish people. Now, the proponents of radical Islam have been saying it is the position of hundreds of millions of Muslims today that they are united in their desire to see harm come to Israel, and more important, the Jews themselves. Ideally, they would like to drive the Jews into the sea so that they might claim Jerusalem and the Holy Land for themselves, for their own. But I want to say this. There are many peace-loving Muslims that don't support the extremism of the radical extremists and would love to live a life in a peaceful world. And as Christians, we need to pray for all the people of all religions that one day they will personally meet Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. So would you say, I hate Muslims? No, I don't. I would say that, that I love all people and all people, Jesus loves them. Jesus himself in John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And that means all people. We should love all people and pray for them. Even if they, they may not be an enemy of, of the state, we need to pray for people and love them as Jesus does. See, that word whoever in that verse means anyone who chooses to believe because the gift of salvation is offered to all. I mean, take a look at the coalition chart in my notes online. If you look in the, the, the handout that I have in there, you'll see these lists, this list. See, the first one is Gog. See, Gog, he refers to the powerful leader of the end times northern military coalition that will launch an invasion against Israel. We see that in Ezekiel 38. See, some scholars say that his actual name is Gog, but many others believe it's a title for the leader in Russia and that it will, will show what he is going to do. See, the main thing here is to understand that he is a formidable, cruel leader of what many believe is the land of Russia. This term apparently refers to a king-like role such as a pharaoh or Caesar or czar or some president, and the terms literally means high, supreme, high-profile sovereign, a height or a high mountain. That's what Gog means. So apparently, this czar-like military leader will be a man of great stature who commands tremendous respect. And if you don't, if you don't like him, you have trouble with him. See, no, he's not the Antichrist, though. He is not the Antichrist. God's mo uh, moment in his limelight is short-lived and is all over when God destroys the invading force, Ezekiel 38, uh, 18 through 39, 6. There'll be apparently, he'll be a man indwelt by the supernatural prince, uh, chief prince, who is God. This man will die. He, you know, Satan will be uh, helping him do whatever he's going to do, but he will die. He'll be buried. Ezekiel 39, 11 says, On that day I will give to Gog a place for burial in Israel, the valley of travelers east of the sea. 
It will block the travelers, for there Gog and all his multitude will be buried. It will be called the Valley of Hamangog. <clears throat> and we're going to discuss this a little later in our study, not today, but in a few, in the next week or so. So, Gog will be a man that dies and is buried as a result of the war. This shows that this battle is definitely not the Battle of Armageddon, as some claim, but it's a prior war because at Armageddon, the Antichrist will be cast into the lake of fire. It doesn't say that he'll die and be buried. It says he'll be cast in the lake of fire. The Antichrist will not be buried or spend time in hell awaiting judgment because that's, this, that will happen at the end of the tribulation. God will judge him at the battle of Armageddon and he is thrown directly into the lake of fire just as the, pro, the false prophet will also have the same fate. So we know that this happens, this war, Gog and Magog, happens before the tribulation. Now let's look at Magog. Magog, mentioned in the Table of Nations in Genesis 10-2, probably refers to the mountainous area near the Black and the Caspian Seas, the former domain of the Scythians. Now if you want to know who the Scythians are, you can find out. This is ancient ones uh, near Russia. And they were, they were formidable warriors that could ride uh, full speed backwards on a horse and be able to hit a target with a bow and arrow. So they were incredible warriors. And more specifically, it refers to the area occupied today by the Southern Soviet Republics of Kazakhstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, uh, Turkmenistan, uh, T Tajikistan, and possibly even northern parts uh, of uh, modern uh, Afghanistan. A lot of stands in there. But uh, significantly, the entire area today is Muslim dominated with more than enough, really enough religious motivation to move against Israel. Now, Rosh is another one. Rosh, from my studies of other scholars and my own opinion and the evidence uh, supports that taking Rosh as a proper noun, that is as a geographical area, where is this geographical place? Well, I believe that Rosh most likely refers to modern Russia. Russia, of course, has a long history of aggressions against Israel. During the 1967 Six-Day War, the Russians were poised to attack Israel, but backed down after President Lyndon Johnson ordered the U.S. Sixth Fleet to steam for, uh, towards Israel. Besides all the modern weaponry, used by Russia in modern warfare. I find it interesting that Ezekiel tells us that there'll be horses involved in the war. And surely Ezekiel used familiar terms uh, to try to describe the modern day weapons and means of transportation he saw in his vision like tanks and fighter jets. However, that doesn't explain the use of horses. But interestingly enough, Russia still maintains a horse cavalry. The Russian army still sends troops into battle on the back of horses in many places. It's been reported in the media that Russians now use their horses to, to transport weapons and equipment to hard-to-reach places. I can see why they would use them in Israel. See, horses were brought to the, their war with Ukraine not too long ago from Russia's autonomous republic of Bashkiria. They used GAZ-66 trucks and quad bikes when possible but with the modernized vehicle, the motorized vehicles, there is a risk of being detected. But they've said in the early morning dawn of, uh, when they ride on horses, <clears throat> excuse me, horses, they can silently and discreetly deliver everything they need to, to combat positions. So every war in Russia's history has always included a horse cavalry. The next, Meshach and Tubal. Meshach and Tubal, often mentioned together in scripture, refer to the geographical territory to the south of the Black and the Caspian Seas, which is today modern Turkey. And though there may be some overlap with, with some of the neighboring countries, uh, it is modern Turkey. Meshach and Tubal are apparently the same as Mushki and Tabal of the Assyrians and Moski and uh, Tiberini of the Greeks, who inhabited the territory that constitutes modern-day Turkey. Now, this is confirmed by the ancient historian Herodotus. Now, what about Persia? Well, Persia 
uh, I think we should know that it, it occupies the same exact territory presently occupied by Iran. In fact, in 1935, Persia became Iran. And during the Iranian Revolution in 1979, the name was changed to the Islamic Republic of Iran. And in view of what biblical prophecy reveals about the alliance between Rosh and Persia, as well as other Muslim nations, it's highly revealing that Iran has become one of the largest recipients of Russian arms with an estimated annual trade in the hundreds of millions of dollars. As of January 2024, um, Russia was reportedly supplying Iran with most of its modern Su-35 fighter planes, submarines, attack helicopters, and jet trainers at an estimated price tech of $9 billion. See, now, unlike in the past, Russia now also buys some weaponry from Tehran. Iran supplies Russia with single-use explosive drones informally referred to as suicide or kamikaze drones. And we see that happening and being used in the Ukrainian war with Russia. Now, Ethiopia. Today, the current country of Ethiopia is only a small fraction of what it used to be in ancient times. The Ethiopia mentioned in the prophecy in Ezekiel 38 is a geographical territory just south of Egypt on the Nile River, what is it today known as Sudan. Sudan is a hardline Islamic nation that is a kindred spirit with Iran in its venomous hatred of Israel. Now what about Put? Well, Put, a land west of Egypt, is, mo is modern-day Libya. However, ancient Libya is larger than the Libya that exists today, and hence the boundaries of Put, referred to in Ezekiel 38-39, may extend beyond modern Libya, perhaps uh, including portions of Algeria and Tunisia. Now, Gomer. Gomer is likely modern-day Turkey as well. Remember, Turkey takes up a lot of space. In support of this view, the historian uh, Josephus said Gomer founded those whom the Greeks called the Galatians. We know them from the Bible. The Galatians of the New Testament times lived in central Turkey, uh, Turkey of today. What about Beth Togarma? Beth Togarma is a Hebrew word that literally means the house of Togarma. <laughs> Ezekiel 38.6 refers to Beth Togarma as being from the remote parts of the north. And some expositors believe Teth, uh, Beth Togarma is another reference to modern-day Turkey as well, which is to the far north of Israel. Remember that Turkey used to be broken up into several smaller territories, but then they were later brought in together under the Ottoman Turks, and it's a very big country now. This view is keeping with the geography of Ezekiel's time, for in that day there was a city in Cappadocia, which is modern-day Turkey, known as Tagarma or Tagarma or Tilgarmu or Takarama. <laughs> a lot of different names. If this identification is correct, this means that Turkey will be one of the nations in the Northern Military Coalition that will invade Israel in the end times with Russia and Iran and other countries. Now, there were additional choices for the alliance members. The list that I was telling you is the general consensus of many biblical and prophetical scholars. But it's good to point out that there are others who have different ideas about who the enemies of Israel will be in this historic war. There's other lists that have been made as, as follows. If in the land of Magog, there is, uh, it equals Russia, Meshach and Tubal somewhere in Russia, uh, Persia is Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, Ethiopia uh, equals Ethiopia and Sudan, Libya equals Libya, Ashkenaz means Australia, uh, Austria, excuse me, Austria, Germany, Gomer means Eastern Europe, possibly Germany, Togarma, uh, Southeastern Europe, and many peoples with thee, it says, various other nations allied with Russia. Uh, take a look at the map that I have in my notes that shows some of the countries. Uh, you will see them there. Now, here's the thing. I want to mention, I mentioned to you who these people are. Well, Gog and Magog is a future invasion. We know that's going to happen after the Psalms 83 war, but before the tribulation. See, in 52 highly descriptive passages in the Bible, the prophet Ezekiel predicts that nine populations named Gomer, Meshach, Tubal, 
Persia, Magog, Togarma, Put, Libya, and Cush will invade Israel in the latter years, which I believe we are now living in. Now, the general consensus among many end times experts today is that these ancient populations identify the modern day countries of Russia and its southern uh, steppes, along with Turkey, Iran, Tunisia, uh, Morocco, Libya, Ethiopia, Sudan, Somalia, and perhaps even Germany. So it's interesting you see that there's different people who have these ideas. Now, some prophecy interpreters deny that these chapters refer to a future invasion into Israel, holding that instead they refer to an invasion in the past. But this is done by making, uh, trying to make things fit into history and leaving parts out that don't fit. Well, you can't do that. That's impossible. That's not proper interpretation of the Bible. The evidence, however, is in favor of a future invasion, something that has not happened yet, that is most likely going to take place before the Great Tribulation period of time. And, and I'm going to give you some more reasons why and understanding in our, in our next couple of lessons. Now, there has never been an invasion into Israel on the scale of what's described in Ezekiel 38-39. There's also never been an invasion into Israel involving the specific nations mentioned in this passage together. Since it has not been fulfilled yet, its fulfillment must be in the future. Also, Ezekiel was clear that the things of which he spoke would be fulfilled in the latter years, Ezekiel 38-8. And in the last days, in Ezekiel 38, 16, uh, from that standpoint of his day. Now, such phrases point to the end time. Also, the unique alignment of nations as described in Ezekiel 38, 39, has never occurred before. But it's occurring in these modern days. They're having alliances. See, an alliance between many of the nations mentioned in Ezekiel 38, 39, may not have been good, made good sense in Ezekiel's day, at that time, some of the nations are not located near each other, and Islam did not yet exist. But it makes great sense today because the nations that make up the coalition are predominantly Muslim. Not, not Russia, but some of its areas are. But that in itself is more than enough reason for them to unify to attack Israel. You know, these extremists, especially given current Islamic, uh, extremist uh, Islamic hatred for Israel. Ezekiel affirmed that the invasion would occur after Israel had been regathered from all around the earth, gathered from the many nations, as we saw in Ezekiel 38, 8, through 12, or 8 and 12, and to a land that has been a wasteland, which they certainly came back to a wasteland. Now certainly, there were occasions in Israel's history when the Jews were held in bondage. They were held in bondage in Egypt, and it was not just the Jews, it was the whole house of Israel. And they went into captivity, uh, ca uh, into captivity, I should say, in Assyria and in Babylon. We saw the northern kingdom in Assyria, the, the southern kingdom, which was Jerusalem. Uh, it was in the, uh, uh, held in Babylon. But in each of these cases, the deliverance being involved, uh, when they were involved there, was set free from a single nation, not many nations around the world. That's why we've not seen the lost tribes come back yet, but they will one of these days. But but Israel is being populated by the Jews and some of the other tribes. Similar, uh, they've said that are some are coming back, like they know who some of the people from the uh, tribe of Levi ha has been coming back, and they've been training them to be priests. Which that's a whole other subject for uh, the end times. But the the only regathering of the Jews from many nations around the world is the one that began, that began in 1948. And as I explained in my teachings that are online about the end times during the tribulation period, we will start seeing the other tribes finding out who they are becoming, because remember, the, the witnesses of the 144,000 make up 12,000 virgin males of each of the tribes, and it names them. Another place in, in, in the Bible that talks about all the tribes uh, coming uh together uh, during the millennial period of time after the tribulation so we'll get more into that later and, and you should look at some of my studies online but we know that the jews started returning in 1948 they have stated people that knew who they were and god brought them back but did they name it uh, judah again like it used to be no they named it israel and there's a reason for that god is bringing back his people 
So therefore, all these individuals that think they're going to destroy Israel, it won't happen. God is protecting them. And that's what's going to happen here in Gog Magog War. They're going to come against Israel. They will lose. Oh, wait till we study about what God does. And we'll be talking about that uh, next week in our, in our study. But see, since Ezekiel 36 and 37 is apparently being literally fulfilled, a regathering from many of the nations, we're seeing that happening today, and they've been, it's been happening since 1948. In the last couple of years, the, the, the Jews that are making Ayala to Israel is, is numbers, it, numerous. It's, it's not been ever seen before. See, and it's reasonable and consistent to assume that chapters 38 and 39 will likewise be literally fulfilled. The, the, the Gog Magog War is going to happen. And I believe we see the Psalms uh, uh, 83 war. And then now, then we will see the Gog Magog war. I, this is in keeping with the well-established literal fulfillment of biblical prophecies. And, and I believe it's going to happen. Many scholars and theologians believe this. Because all these different biblical prophecies throughout the Old Testament uh, are coming uh, to a, a fulfillment. And I believe these various Muslim nations, these extremists, along with Russia, in which Islam is presently growing at a phenomenal rate and pace, and possibly other nations as well, will invade Israel. And they'll do it with money that comes from oil, and it will be the financial backbone of the invasion. Oil is money. It is presently purchasing uh, the weaponry and the military might and equipment that will one day be used against Israel. But I'll tell you what, God has a plan, and we will find that out. Okay, so now, I'm going to close for now. But next week in our next study, we'll study what happens to the coalition of Gog and Magog when they come against Israel. When they try to destroy Israel and take their great wealth, they have another thing coming to them. And we'll find out more about that. So let's get together next week and we'll do that. But for now, let's pray and we'll come to the Lord. Uh, dear Jesus, we thank you for making a way for us to be saved. We thank you, Lord God, for teaching us your word by placing in your word uh, clues and, and hints and then outright explanations of what will happen in these last days. I ask that we will be good scholars of the word, rightly dividing the truth, to be able to see what is right, what is wrong, what is correct, and what is not. We will see the events that are going to take place that come against Israel. And today, I ask that you would help us to pray for these enemies of Israel, that instead of coming against them, they will join them in worshiping you as, as God as Lord and Savior of their life, that you will save them and that they will come to know you. Because we would not see, want to see one person lost and spend an eternity in the lake of fire. So I thank you for giving us a heart that prays for people, that loves people. And let us join together in our studies to know that ultimately you win in all these wars. We thank you for this, and we give you all the praise, all the glory. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining in with me today for this study, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about Center Points Christian Fellowship, or you'd just like to have prayer or a question answered about prophecy or something, let me know. Uh, all you have to do is send me an, e an e email at info at centerpoints.org. If you'd like to get more information on our Wednesday night Bible study or Thursday morning Bible study for women or for our uh, newsletter that I send out weekly uh, that gives you uh, times or whatever for our services, uh, the worship songs that we use at church, uh, any of that, uh, you're welcome to do that and, and, and have a good time with us uh, studying. I, I really look forward to hearing from you. Remember, info at centerpoints.org. If you'd like to see more of our videos, because I post this one and all my other ones on YouTube, uh, I, I do them for uh, weekly at, at Facebook and on my website, but it's, which is www.centerpoints.org. But if you'd like to find all the previous videos, go to YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash uh, the at symbol CPCF forward slash videos, and you'll find all of them there. 
So until I see you again, stay safe and may God bless you and have a great day.